Hello everyone, Mark with High Tech Legion. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at an energy saving motherboard. And that is the B85 Eco motherboard from MSI. We can see nice green coloring on the box to really enunciate the Eco that this board is offering. Right here on the front, approved energy efficient approved long-term stability Intel Gigabit LAN supports Intel Small Business Advantage supports Intel Core Processors Intel B85 chipset on the back of the box Ecotech Design Eco Center Pro Eco Performance really a board that is focusing on not just the power saving features but giving you the most capability that they could Stay tuned as we get back into the B85M Eco motherboard from MSI. So let's go ahead and take a look at the box a little bit more in depth. And we can see right at the top, uh, MSI features the Eco motherboard doing more with less. So there's more security in the BIOS, in application, and lock by password. Ecotech Design, Eco Center Pro, Eco Performance. So they're really focusing on the Eco portion of this motherboard, that it is really a power saving board. It's not meant to be a board that's going to give you great overclocking capability or great functionality as far as that goes. It's really focused on the less power consumption. Two steps from better to best, up to 40% energy saved in idle status. So this is really a board <clears throat> that is focusing on all of their eco features. If we go ahead and take a look at the board itself here, we can see the nice green and white design. Again, focusing on the eco with that, that green layout. We can see our Intel socket 1150 here for your Intel processors, your four RAM slots. CPU fan at the top, 4-pin power port to power your CPU. Over here we do have an onboard eco switch. We have a system fan header, a 24-pin ATX power connector, two SATA connectors on the side, and four facing upward on the board here. We can see the eco series chipset. <clears throat> we have one PCI slot at the bottom two PCI Express X1 and one PCI Express X16 slot. Across the bottom of the motherboard we have our standard headers. We also have our USB, USB. Our audio is over here. And at the front here we have our USB 3.0. On the back panel we have PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse, two USB 2.0 an HDMI port, two USB 3.0, a DVI, a VGA, two more USB 2.0, your Intel Gigabit LAN, and your three audio ports. With this motherboard, there is included the I.O. Shield, which again has the Eco branding, or the Eco logoing, so that when even when this is installed inside your case, you have the Eco on the back so it's not just your standard I.O. it is not ESD shielded however everything is green also on the I.O. shield and we see that Eco Series logo two standard SATA cables one 90 degree and one straight we have your driver installation disc again which is green we have your H97M and B85M Eco User's Guide. And also provided by MSI, the Quick Installation Guide. <clears throat> so now that we've had a chance to go ahead and look at all of the included accessories with this motherboard, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build the motherboard. We're going to go ahead and build our system. And we're going to actually show you the running system so we can get into some more of the eco functionality of this motherboard. Um, we do have 
uh, some different software that we're going to show you. We're going to show you some benchmarks so that we can see that even though this is the Eco Series product, we still get the USB 3.0 transfer capabilities of the B85 chipset. We're going to go ahead and get that built, put together. We'll get back on screen. Stay tuned. So the first thing I want to give you guys a look at here is the BIOS of the Eco Series motherboard. We can see that the overall layout follows the green theme that MSI has for their B85M Eco Series motherboard. It follows the, the green that's on the memory slots, the PCI Express slots, the box, and the overall Eco theme. <clears throat> so we can see right up in the top left here, it shows our CPU temperature, gives us our time and date, version of the BIOS, and then also our specifications for this testing setup that we have here because it is an Eco Series board. We have the 20th anniversary G3258 Intel Pentium processor installed in this system. And only one stick of DDR3 4 gig uh, of memory. So at the front here, we can see our Eco switch right here, which there's also the Eco switch on the motherboard that I showed you earlier. We can also turn on the Eco settings right here. If we start at the top here, we can see our boot device priority, and we can drag and drop this. We'll see our hard disk, which is my Kingston SSD that I have. We can drag that all the way to the front, and then we can see the CD slash DVD ROM drive that I have installed. So it gives us all the availability of everything that we have on the board to boot from and we can just drag and drop our order of how we want it to look. If we go to the right here, the Eco Profiles, we can see the different profiles that we can set up through the BIOS and go ahead and save all of our settings and save six different profiles there. We can also load from ROM save to USB or load from USB. So if we did save these profiles to a USB disk, we can then load the profiles from a USB disk later on. If we look at the hardware monitor here, it's gonna bring up this little graph and we can see this is the CPU fan setting. It's running at 760 or so RPMs. We can see the CPU temperature is 36 Celsius. The system temperature is 31 Celsius. If we go to our system fans, now I only have the CPU fan plugged in, so our system fan is not reading anything because there is nothing plugged into that in the motherboard. At the bottom here, we can see the voltage on the CPU core and all of our other voltages for our system. So we can see our memory here is 1.488, 1.504, our internal GPU voltage, our 12 volt system voltage, 5 volt, 3 volt, and CPU IO voltage. If we click on about, it just gives us the basic MSI information. If we click on help, it gives us our basic key functions. So if we close that down there, and we look at the board explorer, this gives us, now again, this is the at the top left here we see this is the MSI Click BIOS 4. So if you've used MSI's Click BIOS versions before, this should look uh, very familiar to you and work very familiar. The bottom right here, the Board Explorer, if we click on that we can see all of our ports and things here on our motherboard. If we hover over the CPU socket here, at the bottom of our screen here it shows us LGA 1150 socket Intel Pentium CPU G3258 at 3.20 gigahertz. We can also see I have one memory slot here installed. So if you hover over the memory slots, it'll tell you if something is installed in them. And it goes through what each thing is on the motherboard. So we can see our ATX 12 volt power. If I hover over the SATA ports, it shows us our DVD ROM and also our SSD drive, our eco button, and if we scroll over to the back, we can actually see what is plugged in to each port on our motherboard. The M Flash is our BIOS update utility. 
our eco settings here is another big function of the eco motherboard we have our eco button function control by onboard button if we select that by bios options by onboard button so it gives us our options there extreme memory profile is disabled we could set the profile one and that would set our xmp profile for our memory cut power and we see all of these features are enabled so when the system is not using the power it's going to cut down the power on all of these different options here at the top here we have our hotkey button and our back button so we can just click the back button and get into the rest of the features our cpu specifications it will give you your micro codes your cpu frequency your cpu ratio and all of your the rest of your information on your cpu if we click on cpu technology support it also gives us everything else that the cpu has in that again we click our back buttons and we can go back we click on our memory it'll show us our memory speed it'll show us our different timings xmp support information and it'll go a little bit deeper into our xmp settings and then if we look at our additional cpu settings we can set all active processor cores or we can set just specific cores so if you had a quad core you were running a, the eco board you only wanted to run one core you could limit that here and all of your other CPU functions. So if we click on at the top left here is our settings. We have our system status, which gives us our date and time that we can set, and also our system information, and then our DMI information, which is the information on our motherboard and chassis. So if we just, our mouse wheel will scroll down here, but if we scroll to the bottom, it's going to kind of keep coming up to the top as you can see so the best way to do that is to drag the slide bar here to be able to view all the information serial number to be filled by OEM asset tag so there's some other information that we can fill in if we go back again we can go to our advanced settings we have PCI subsystem settings ACPI settings integrated peripherals integrated graphics configuration Intel's rapid start technology, USB, and all of our other settings that we would want to configure. If we go to boot, again, we can just adjust that at the top here, or we can go into here and we can have set all of our boot features or disable whatever we do not want to be on. Again, our boot mode select, we can see here legacy plus UEFI. So depending on the type of operating system that you were installing, you can set that specifically we can see our full screen logo display here. So we can enable that if we want the MSI logo to show. If we want to see our system information, we could disable that. And then down at the bottom, we have our hard drive and CD-ROM drive boot priorities. If we look at our security, we can set an administrator or a user password, chassis intrusion configuration, and then our last setting, and our settings here is save and exit. So if we go ahead and save and exit, you have your normal features. Um, because when we booted this board, it was tested with a different processor. We got the option to load optimal defaults when I first powered on the motherboard or to come into setup. So this is our Eco BIOS, as we can see by the Eco Series logo and the green layout of the BIOS, the Click BIOS 4 from MSI. Stay tuned, we're gonna come back and get into our actual operating system and some of the software that this motherboard provides. Okay, so we have our system all set up here. And you can see on the left-hand side of the screen here, the MSI driver and software is set up. On our first tab here, we already have all this installed, but I just wanted to show you what was included on the MSI disk with the MSI B85M Eco motherboard. We have all of our normal drivers. We can check this box at the top to install all the drivers that we would need for our system. You also want to come down here because under this other driver tab there's Google Chrome, Google Toolbar, and the MSI wallpaper which we can see I've installed that and it gives us a nice background for our Eco Series board. And then there's also some other uh, features and utilities from MSI. If we go to our utilities tab we have our Fastboot, Live Update 6, Smart Utilities, Eco Center Pro, 
and then there's a 7-zip and Intel Extreme tuning utility. They also give us the option to install Google Drive, a Norton antivirus software, and then if we go to the system information tab, it gives us the version of the drivers that are on the disk. We can also look at the driver content and see it tells us what operating system that it is compatible with. As well as if we click on About MSI, it gives us some phone numbers and a link for the MSI website. And at the bottom here, information, it tells us our operating system, our motherboard model, BIOS version, graphics card model, which I don't have a graphics card installed, so it is just the Intel HD graphics, and then our uh, graphics card BIOS version. So that is our driver and software setup CD that is included with our motherboard. And we're going to take a look at uh, some of the software that is included here in our green MSI disk. We're going to take a look at some of the software that comes on that CD. We have, of course, our Intel HD graphics control panel, which is nothing out of the ordinary. We have MSI's Fast Boot software. We have MSI Live Update 6, which will, again, check for your drivers and make sure that everything is up to date. And we can just automatically scan. We have the MSI Smart Utilities. <clears throat> which will perform a little scan uh, when we double click to open it up and then we in here we have our Intel Rapid Start and Smart Connect technology where you can see here if we click on them we can turn them on and then if we click on the uh, Intel Rapid Start it will shrink the SSD volume. Then we have here our MSI Supercharger which is for our USB port so if our system goes into a sleep state we will still be able to have uh, something plugged into our USB port and charge, say, our smart device or your tablet or whatever it may be through the accorded cable. Uh, a, a big thing about this motherboard, too, I do have my kilowatt meter plugged in. And sitting at idle, this board is using about 21 uh, watts of power. Um, I do have a single 120 gig SSD, a DVD CD ROM drive. The motherboard, I have 16 gigs of RAM. I updated that for some of the benchmarks to get some more appropriate numbers. I have the Pentium G3258 uh, processor, and that's it running in the system. And it's using 21 watts at idle. Um, I do have the eco settings turned on. Um, while I was running some of the benchmarks, uh, Sandra and Ada and PCMark, it only went up to use about 53 watts uh, on the system so very low power very eco-friendly system if we go into the MSI Eco Center Pro here we can look at eco power settings here and we can see that we can adjust the CPU temperature for or adjust the fan I should say so the CPU fan option is here and when we hover over something it brings and selects that portion of the board as we hover over it. So the CPU fan, it shows us the CPU fan header. So if we have our CPU fan plugged into this header, under a certain temperature fan will stop. So we can set it to 42 or 47 Celsius and the CPU fan will shut off while the system or the CPU temperature is under that. We have our system fan, hard drive LED, power LED, eco button LED, LAN port LEDs, audio ports, HDMI, DVI, D-sub, our LAN port, and our PCI slot. Now we can turn all of these with the little lightning bolt here. That means they're all selected. So we can say all and apply. And when we click, click that, it says the device connected will not be able to work after the power is cut off. Do you want to cut the power now? So it will actually cut power to these different features to save power on the motherboard for say things you're not using if you don't have audio hooked up or you know you don't need to have your power LED or hard drive LED or your system fan if you don't have one connected you can cut power to those features thus saving more power uh, on the motherboard. There is also a lounge mode which it will as you can see here it's just an automatic setting that cuts the power to the system fan, CPU fan audio ports, HDMI, DVI ports, and the PCI slot. So it does not cut power on these other things. 
and then there is a server mode which if we enable that it again cuts power to specific things that are predetermined by MSI if we go back to the eco mode we can see what it leaves on and what it cuts power to if we go into power management we can adjust basically BIOS settings right here through the software so we can see hyper threading we can turn that on or off all active processor cores we could limit that to a certain number um, we have our limit CPU ID maximum value executable execute disable bit <clears throat> Intel virtualization technology and we have other options just like in our BIOS that we can turn on or off directly through this software thus making this board even more efficient and then if we go to our hardware monitor here we can see smart mode and manual mode at the top this gives us our fan curve it tells us our CPU fan speed it also at the bottom gives us our direct voltages you can see right now our CPU V core is at 0.144 volts 0 0.080 volts so it's fluctuating based upon what we're using being that we're just looking at the software the system is not using a lot of power so the processor doesn't need to pull a lot of power we also have our 3.3 volt 5 volt and 12 volt settings so we can see what those rails of our power supply are actually running at by looking at the numbers here in the column. Our DDR RAM voltage is 1.5 and our CPU IO voltage is 1.016. We can see our system temperatures over here. Our CPU temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. System temperature is 32 degrees Celsius. Our CPU fan is running at 761 RPMs, 763 and our system fan is at zero RPMs because one is not in pl uh, plugged in. So we can we have the default setting here, which is what we're set on now. We can also go over to manual mode and manually adjust our fans for our CPU fan. We can also click over here to the right on system fan one, manually adjust the fan on the system fan, or we can set it to auto fan, which will run according to MSI's predetermined settings. So that is our EcoCenter Pro software. Um, one other thing that I want to walk through here, which comparing the B85M Eco motherboard and the Intel Pentium G3258 processor uh, with, the, with the USB 3.0, I have a USB 3.0 external hard drive connected to the system. And we have our one gig file uh, here that we use to test transfer speeds uh, across different platforms. It's the same file uh, inside the folder, same package that we use to do testing across all motherboards. So just to give you an idea here of the USB 3.0 speeds, even with the eco settings on, I'm going to go ahead and drop this and start my timer. And we can see that transferred in just about eight seconds. We do that one more time here we'll go ahead and delete empty the recycle bin and let's go ahead and take this one gig file drop it again so even with our eco settings on we still get the full functionality of the USB 3.0 of course our SATA 3 settings um, so we still get that same performance, um, but yet at the same point in time, the system is using 21 watts of power. So it's a very low power system. Of course, if you had a different processor in the motherboard, an i5 or an i7, it would use a little bit more than that. But the system is very capable for just having that Pentium uh, processor in the machine, the low power eco board. It's not a high performance machine, it's, but it's definitely something that for a low power solution, um, it really hits the mark. Uh, especially with the software that MSI gives us for you know tuning different settings um, we can also see if we go online here now our land settings we can see how quickly everything responds here there's no lag there's no delay and again now while I'm browsing online I'm using about uh, 35 watts of power 35 to 37 let's go to YouTube <laughs> And while we're browsing online, <clears throat> watching a video, the system is using about uh, 28 to 30 watts of power. 
even going full screen at 1080p, uh, now we're using maybe 34 or so watts of power. So an extremely efficient system, of course, if you had, say, an i5 processor or um, a, you know, an i7, something that was going to use more power, um, you might utilize more power. But the motherboard itself is based around all the eco capabilities, and we can see that it's very efficient in doing that. So if we look at our, uh, even just some normal online flash games here, again, we're using, you know, maybe 45 watts of power. Uh, at a maximum. And this motherboard is meant to be very efficient. The system is running so silent um, that I don't even hear any, you know, the CPU fan running. Everything is just running at a very nice low speed or low sound, I should say, um, almost producing no sound at all. So the only thing that I've ever heard when with this system running was the CD drive actually spinning up to read the CD properly. So even though this is the eco board as i showed you we still get the full usb 3.0 functionality we still get our full sata 3 functionality um, if we look our boot time is still very nice on this setup um, i do have again a 120 gig ssd if we do a restart on the system and again this is with windows 8.1 we can see our full screen logo. <clears throat> and with our 120 gig SSD, utilizing the SATA 3 ports, we can see how quickly the system starts up. So even being as low power as it is, having just a Pentium G3258 processor in the system, it still utilizes all the functionality, the SATA 3.0, the USB 3.0, you still do have a single PCI Express X16 slot. So as a, even a home theater PC, um, this would be, you know, a great option or possibly, you know, a little network box. Um, um, it's really a great little system that is only going to use the power uh, required to get the system to function the way that it needs. So if you put a larger graphics card in here, of course, it's going to use more power. But the board itself, the functions are all based on all of your eco settings and eco options and being able to run a fully functional computer. A lot of people at home only go online. They only access email. They're only doing word processing. So this system is going to do it without hurting your electric bill. Um, it's going to be, you know, just that very minimal uh, usage of power on your system. And again, is fully able to be adjusted to Turn some of those eco settings on, turn some of them off. Get more performance when you need it, you know, or when you don't need it. So it takes outside of the BIOS, which we walked through, into the software, which also allows further, you know, adjustments. Um, we are going to get into some benchmarks. Um, we did run the PC Mark 8 uh, software, and we ran Ada and Sandra. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. And while we're looking at these, we can see that our PCI 8, PC Mark 8 score of 2511, again, without the processor overclocked, just using the Pentium processor, is a very respectable score. So even though we have all these eco functionalities of the motherboard, still very respectable when it comes down to PC Mark 8. Looking at our Sandra software, we ran, we ran our processor arithmetic and our memory bandwidth tests, which again gave us very respectable numbers. And into our Ada suite, we ran our memory uh, and our L1 and L2 cache tests. And we can see again that for the Pentium processor uh, and for the board that is based on eco settings, the numbers are still very respectable. So even though this board is focused on all of your eco power options, um, on the box itself, we talk about all of our eco power options. And one other thing that I wanted to touch on with the box of the MSI motherboard is right here. We can see on the left hand side here, Eco Series to innovate and develop green products for the benefit of future generations. So MSI lets us know in response to the increasingly stringent environmental regulations and demands of our 
international clientele, providing environmentally friendly products and services to consumers, and move towards the goals of a green design, green resources, and green technology. So MSI was really focused on the being green and the eco with this motherboard, and it's right on point. Um, you still get the performance, but you have those eco functionalities all together. Stay tuned for our conclusion. Can I see the screen? Thank you. Okay. Thank you for watching our video overview and review of the MSI B85M Eco motherboard. Hope you enjoyed the video as well as the benchmarks that we went through to show you that even though this board is set up for Eco settings and for very low power usage, you still get the same functionality and performance from your ports like your SATA 3 ports, your USB 3.0, as well as your memory and your processor depending on which one you're using, but it still utilizes that low power option and you have all the eco settings so you can fine tune the computer to run very silently as well as to either minimize power as much as you want or to utilize the better performance that you want to get out of the board. From the features of this motherboard and everything that is included, this board will receive the Gold Award from High Tech Legion. Make sure you click right down here below to subscribe to our future upcoming YouTube video reviews, overviews, and other fun and exciting stuff from High Tech Legion. You can also find the full video review at HighTechLegion.com, as well as follow us on Twitter at Twitter.com forward slash High Tech Legion. You can also find us on Facebook. Give us a like at Facebook.com forward slash HTL Reviews. Thanks for watching.